Now we start with the real things. In other words, we're going to talk about gravitational and Coulomb force. The gravitational Coulomb force, and uh, the left-hand side, of course, that's mass times acceleration just equals force. Now the right-hand side, we have a constant K, which I'll explain in a minute. And whenever you have a Coulomb or gravitational force, you always went over R squared. The force direction will be the negative of the uh, the radial direction, so which we call a n hat, like that. Now, this is the mathematically exactly the same if I write this particular expression. Essentially, both sides divide by m. So I got a velocity uh, dot, which means acceleration, is going to be equal to this term. So there's no uh, no no surprises here. So what that means, this n is defined as the r uh, the vector divided by the length of this vector, which is the magnitude of that. Now, k here, if you have a gravitational uh, gravity itself, this k is going to be equal to g times these two masses, m1 times m2. g is the universal gravitational constant. k here is, uh, this are two k's, Coulomb constant, and you time these two charges. Now, let's uh, break down into a little more detail. So let's look at the velocity. We know the velocity equals r dot. And because we're going to use a spherical one, so therefore the r direction is going to be along the, the uh, r n direction, uh, the same direction as the r. So we just write them out. In other words, just remember, this r itself equals r times r the scalar, times our magnitude of the r, times its direction. Now, for the spheroid coordinates, it's something which is very crucial. The, its direction, n, is changing with time. So, in other words, you are going to see these two terms. One is the, the, uh, the uh, r radial directions and times the magnitude of difference, uh, the, uh, the derivative with respect to time. Second one is the direction change. Okay, so these two terms will come out. That gave you the velocity. Once we have velocity, so then we look at the uh, orbital angular momentum. So this is just R cross P. We know P just mass times velocity. So that's what I'm doing here. You can see mass times velocity comes out. So now the R direction, I purposely uh, put these two terms. The N represents R direction, but R is just the magnitude of uh, out the uh, radius itself. So then we plug it in and then R and move them out. So we have this particular expression. Now remember, we know V. V is the previous expression, which we got over here. So we just plug them in. And you see something which is very interesting things come out. One is the uh, magnitude change with time. One is the direction which change with time. The first term has to be zero because you see N cross N has to be zero. So that's why I just wrote down here. You only have a second term that comes out like this. So this is the purely due to the fact that the direction is changing. So to be more precise, which is a shorthanded way to write them down, just m squared times n cross product n dot, which is time derivative. So I change this one here to this one. Now this is the first part, which is just tells you that the, the orbital angular momentum, we said it's constant. What do we mean by constant? What that means is these two is cross product together. Essentially, the radius direction times the derivative radial direction, that's orbital momentum. And to, in the lower level courses, we just simply say that if you have circular motion, suppose that you have something like this. If you rotate like this, so that we just curve, uh, you move your fingers around the uh, loop directions and your thumbs point out of page. So that's orbital angular momentum. What is even more interesting, if you calculate R cross L, which means we calculate the radius cross product with the orbital angular momentum. We will find something which is very interesting. Now, of course, we have these two terms, uh, uh, this term. But now, second term is zero. You, you won't have this term comes out. In other words, we are using this one. The reason was that V cross product with the L, the L itself, you remember L itself, this guy is zero. In other words, the, uh, the orbital angular momentum is constant, so there is no derivative on this anymore because the derivative is zero. So what we have is this term. Now, the v dot here is just acceleration, as you can see here. So that's v dot, so that's acceleration here. So I just plug that in. 
And so then what you will see, essentially, I can write them down that the uh, R cross the uh, the uh, L is just equal to the R direction times the orbital angular momentum. And once you know that, so then you can see it's kind of a very interesting, even though the L is constant, remember L is constant, this dot product is zero. So this dot product is zero. So therefore in the left hand side it should be zero. But now we have these three possible terms. And these three possible terms is give us this particular expression, which is so neatly only depends on the direction of the uh, the, the direction uh, the the uh, the, uh, the factor, and this is, turns out is which is very crucial. Next video I'm going to show you what that look like.